feelings of fear, dread, repulsion, happy, sad, and others. By using imagery, writers can evoke the feeling they want to talk about in their readers. Let's discuss the types of imagery in literature. Dear learners, this is Renette and welcome to another lesson. My last video was about how to deconstruct a text and we discussed about the types of context in a text. If you happen to miss that video, please click the link above or below here. In the literature, one of the most strongest devices is imagery, wherein the author uses words and phrases to create mental images for the reader. For you as readers, have you ever been in a situation where your teacher mentioned the catchphrase, be as descriptive as possible? In short, imagery can best be defined as descriptive language. If you take that definition one step further and apply it to the five human sense, then the definition simply becomes descriptive language that has the ability of appealing to the five human senses. That does not necessarily mean that imagery applies to all five human senses collectively. It merely means that imagery is the uses of descriptive language that can be appealing to one or more of the five human senses. Imagery means to use figurative language to represent objects, actions, and ideas in such a way that it appeals to our physical senses. Imagery needs the aid of figures of speech like simile, metaphor, personification, and onomatopoeia in order to appeal to the bodily senses. That's why you need to review your figures of speech lesson. The function of imagery in literature is to generate a vibrant and graphic presentation of a scene that appeals to as many of the reader's senses as possible. It aids your imagination as a reader to envision the characters and scenes in the literary piece clearly. Although most often used in poetry, imagery can be used just about any form of writing, whether fiction or non-fiction. Imagery is what provides the color or what a reader can see in his or her mind's eye about a particular written work. Contemporary examples of imagery in action include stories in the newspaper, crime scene reports, and of course, works of fiction. Imagery is also used in songs, movies, television shows, and everyday reports. It is the way in which the writer or author of a particular work conveys texture and vividness to the reader. It is also the way in which the writer shows the reader the intended image of the work instead of telling them. Try to look at this sample imagery from the song of Alicia Keys. Can you spot the imagery here? These are some of the imagery that we can find in the song. You see, every literature, whether it is a song or a poem, fiction or news report, it needs imagery. And to further understand it, let's identify the types of imagery. There are usually five types of imagery and we base it from our human senses, but other writers added two more imagery. Here are the seven types of imagery. The first is visual imagery. In this form of poetic imagery, the poet appeals to the reader's sense of sight by describing something the speaker or narrator of the poem sees. It may include colors, brightness, shapes, sizes, and patterns. To provide readers with visual imagery, Poets often use metaphor, simile, or personification in their description. This is one of the best examples of visual imagery. The second type of imagery is auditory imagery. This form of poetic imagery appeals to the reader's sense of hearing or sound. It may include music and other pleasant sounds, harsh noises, or silence. In addition to describing a sound, the poet might also use a sound device like onomatopoeia or words that imitate sounds. So reading the poem 
allowed recreate the auditory experience. One example from Jet Kids' short poem, To Autumn, the final poem he wrote before abandoning the craft because poetry was not paying the bills. He concludes with auditory imagery. The third type is gustatory imagery. In this form of imagery, the poet appeals to the reader's sense of taste by describing something, the speaker or narrator of the poem. By describing something, the speaker or narrator of the poem tastes. It may include sweetness, sourness, saltness, savoriness, or spiciness. This is especially effective when the poet describes a taste that the reader has experienced before and can recall from sense memory. This is one of the examples of gustatory imagery. The next is tactile imagery. In this form of poetry imagery, the poet appeals to the reader's sense of touch by describing something the speaker of the poem feels on their body. It may include the feel of temperatures, textures, and other physical sensations. Here is one example written by Robert Browning. The next one is olfactory imagery. In this form of imagery, the poet appeals to the reader's sense of smell by describing something the speaker of the poem inhales. It may include pleasant fragrances or off-putting odors. And this is one of the examples written by H.W. Longfellow. The next imagery is kinesthetic imagery. In this form of poetic imagery, the poet appeals to the reader's sense of motion. It may include the sensation of speeding along in a vehicle, a slow sauntering, or a sudden jolt when stopping. And it may apply to the movement of the poem's speaker or narrator or objects around them. Here is one example of kinesthetic imagery. Now the last is organic imagery. In this form of poetic imagery, the poet communicates internal sensations such as fatigue, hunger, and thirst, as well as internal emotions such as fear, love, and despair. This is one of the examples of organic imagery written by Robert Frost. And his poem is entitled Virtues. So finally, we have discussed the seven types of imagery. And the last two imagery are somewhat new to you, I think. Because we are in the 21st century, I want you to share to you a Filipino poem written by Rina Garcia, a Filipino contemporary writer. Her poem uh, is entitled, As He Pleases. This is the copy of the poem and some of the imagery that I have found in the poem. I hope you will suggest or add more imagery or whatever your thoughts are about this point in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Happy learning everyone! See you!